You ever grow up with something that you absolutely cherished, something that gave you fond memories of your childhood, and something that introduced you to more mature topics you would only grow to understand later? Well, for me, that treasured item was a game called Final Fantasy VII on the original PlayStation. So imagine my surprise and sheer joy at hearing the news that it would be fully remade from the ground up for modern consoles with modern graphics. But then it released and, well, uh, wasn't that good. And now the company that owns the IP, Square Enix, is facing dire financial problems. So what exactly went wrong? And is someone going to acquire Squeenix? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the cesspool that is modern gaming. The first time I ever heard of the game and got to see it in action was on a demo disc included with the official PlayStation magazine, back when video game mags were still a thing. I know, I'm that old. I played the hell out of the original Final Fantasy VII when I picked it up that September 9th, 1997. If memory serves me right, I actually beat that game all the way through, not once, but twice. I would spend hours on the phone with my buddy Steve as we played it together. No one could get enough. Then came the remake on the PS5. And to say that it sucked would be an understatement. Now, to be fair, if I had never played the original, I'd say it was an okay game built for modern audiences. That's the key word, modern audiences. But since I played the original, I knew how the game should play and how the story should unfold. The issue is that I'm a millennial, not the Gen Z or Gen Alpha, and therefore my attention span remains relatively intact and I don't suffer from TikTok brain rot. But the FF7 remake was made specifically for those experiencing TikTok brain rot. So everything needed to be fast, there didn't need to be any strategy or methodology to beating enemies as in the original. In essence, the remake was a dumb, watered-down button masher, not the thoughtful, strategic game that the original was. And well, old-school fans didn't go for this trash. Square Enix had a hard time pulling in younger audiences because Gen Z and Gen Alpha don't hold on to the nostalgia of the original like we do. And now the company is in pretty serious trouble. According to the stellar journalism coming out of the website That Dark Place, Square Enix announced a 70% decline in corporate profits. Call me crazy, but that seems like a precipitous drop. Given what I just talked about, are you really that surprised though? You made a game that intended to tap into gamers' nostalgia, but you made the game for modern audiences, and now your sales dropped. Well, gee willikers, can't say I feel sorry for you. You tossers! You had one job to do! The story continues on to say that Square Enix is going to be retooling and making games multi-platform. This is yet another case of a company completely missing the lesson right in front of them. You made a bad game. Releasing it on multiple platforms doesn't change the fact that the game is utter dog shit. But fear not, dear viewer. I've got a little theory I want to run by you. I've been telling my friends for a while now that the video game industry is undergoing a massive shift. Not only are they going more woke, but studios and developers are consolidating. I mean, hell, Microsoft bought Bethesda and Activision Blizzard. It only stands to reason that Sony is going to make moves of their own. Sony going after Square Enix is the most sensible financial decision in history. The two companies share a deep and rich history going back decades. Ever since Square ditched Nintendo in the fifth generation of video games back in the 90s. While the Nintendo 64 was a pretty powerful 3D console for the time, it had one major weakness, storage. Those carts were not only very expensive to manufacture, but they could only store a limited amount of data, which the PlayStation CD-ROM blew out of the water. Ever since Square decided to put Final Fantasy on Sony's platforms, they had a strong partnership. Going multi-platform isn't the solution. There's tons of games that are exclusive and pretty damn good. Sony's sitting on a decent amount of cash right now, and purchasing Square Enix to try to compete with Microsoft only makes sense. But it seems that the studio itself is going with this asinine strategy of releasing their games not only on every platform, which itself is pretty damn expensive, but it also plans to go mobile, 
according to the article, with iOS and Android releases. Wow, way to dilute your brand, dog. Let me unpack that last one, though. When companies started going after the casual mobile game market, they put out a ton of cheap, lazy shovelware. Games without a ton of substance or fun. Something to pass the time, rather than outright enjoy. Along with that came the advent of microtransactions. So whenever I hear that a game studio wants to get into mobile games, my microtransaction spidey senses start to tingle. And for a company as desperate and broke as Square Enix, it's only a matter of time before they engage in the nonsense of microtransactions. Sony buying Square Enix may halt their idiotic business strategy of multi-platform mobile and microtransactions. Following Microsoft's major acquisitions of Bethesda and Activision, Sony needs to respond, and this is their absolute best avenue. Only time will tell if common sense will prevail. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like the FF7 remake? And what do you think about Sony buying Square Enix? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.